It's a fiesta, it's a good vibe and a lot of energy. That is what we bring to the table and contribute to the game. Good morning to you. It's uh, Thursday, the 29th day of September, the penultimate day in what many regard as the best month of the year. No objection, so I'll continue. <laughs> good morning, Bridge Nation. We're here. Until 10 o'clock this morning. Come on. My name is Richard B. Blessings, Bridge Nation. You know, this is your boy Shells. Yes, Bridge Nation. DJ Audley is in the All right. Look like you catch a fever already, brother. <laughs> well, I don't have to tell you, but let's leave it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, let me just uh, quickly mention that uh, NWC needs to get their act together because I know of some. Uh, uh, some some particular areas right now that are without water since yesterday. You remember the problem we spoke about a few days ago with um, pipes that are broken and repaired and broken again yeah, yeah, and repaired. Yeah. yeah, that saga is continuing, yeah. and it has reached my ends. Yeah, so Too close, man. yeah, man. Yeah. So when it reach my ends, now we have to talk. Yeah. Who's a talk? Talk. Yeah. Who's a talk? We say talk. NWC. Well, I already contacted Andrew Cannon, so Andrew, I'm, I'm depending on you to fix that situation. Check your WhatsApp message, Mr. Cannon. NWC, please. I don't understand how one pipe can get broken and repaired four times and it still is developing into a, a, a continued problem. I don't get it. Are people losing their jobs for inefficiency? Mm. Getting demoted? Mm. Transferred to a different department? Losing pay well, yeah. while we're losing sleep and suffering discomfort? Come on, NWC, do better. Yeah. And uh, we go right into WTF. That's what the fact. And this is an interesting mm -hmm. one that we wanted to share with you uh, this morning <laughs> because we're finding out that uh, there was a time when parents would actually or could actually mail their kids to maybe grandma or some other member of the family through the postal service. Yeah, this is like 1913 we're talking about, by the way. <laughs> Decades before the first unaccompanied child was put on a plane to grandma's in the care of a flight attendant, a, re a, re a few resourceful parents accomplished the same end <laughs> by simply dropping their kids in the mail. What? Well, this was in the earliest days of the Parcel Post Service, which launched in 1913. Before that, U.S. Postal Service packages were capped at four pounds, which limited the goofy things that people tried to send by post. But when the Parcel Service began, all kinds of cargo showed up in, in the mail stream. We're talking about things like coffins, uh, people sent eggs, uh, dogs go ba ba wow 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 wow. <laughs> And even human, young human beings. So according to the National Postal uh, Museum, historian Nancy Pope, the first known case of a mailed baby was in 1913 when Mr. and Mrs. Jesse Bouge of Glen Est, uh, or estate in Ohio, shipped their 10-pound infant son to his grandmother's home, which was about a mile away, and it cost them a little, um, a little penny or two. They paid 15 cents in postage and $50 in insurance for travel, of course. So, the precious parcels weren't truly parcels in the brown paper and bubble wrap sense. Instead, they were more like companions or well-swaddled bundles in the arms of their carriers. But in 1914, the Postmaster General instituted a rule about the mail that stands to this day, which is no humans no human beings ah hmm. oh, so that didn't last at all but, but then i look on the, the 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 screen a while ago <laughs> and one thing fall to my mind instantly you know me never seen a black baby so just saying <laughs> i'm just saying what, 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 what am i I'm, saying I'm, here, what I'm just saying you know our, our race has had enough of Strangers carrying us to distant places. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait. <laughs> so, we're we're, uh, we're not that. Listen to me. We'd rather carry picnic to grandma ourselves. 
We didn't yeah. last. It didn't last for more than a year. A year. Yeah, that can't so work. So within a year, them say, "Yo, this thing ain't not working." You know? That can't work. Maybe because they were, because they weren't getting any black babies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Can't, can't work. Yeah. Can't you, work. you have to be in the microphone for us to hear, sir. We're traveling enough on ships. So. Ah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where I was going. Yep. We good. So uh, that is what happened in 1913 until 1914 mm-hmm. in the uh, U.S. postal system. That is WTF. What the fact? Time for update. All right, British Nation. So, don't know. So, in November, we'll be experiencing the richest World Cup. Yes, right. The World Cup in Qatar will be kicking off. However, you're going to notice there's a team with a, with a good amount of big baller. We'll be going through a bit of a, I, I like to call it a silent protest. So, Denmark, I want you to pay very close attention to Denmark's jerseys um, for this World Cup because they their supplier, Hummel Sport, they're going to be, they, they wish, they don't wish to be visible during the World Cup because of Qatar's massive human rights violations and stuff like that. So what's happening is that Hummel Sports is saying that with the Danish national team's new jerseys, we wanted to send a dual message. They are not only inspired by Euro 92, paying tribute to Denmark's greatest football success, but also a protest against Qatar and its human rights record. That's why we've toned down the details for Denmark's new World Cup jerseys, including our logo and iconic chevrons. We don't wish to be visible during a tournament that has cost thousands of people their lives. We support the Danish national team all the way, but that isn't the same as supporting Qatar as a host nation. We believe that that sport should bring people together, and when it doesn't, we want to make a statement. Hashtag, history is what we do now. So yeah, that's Hummel Sport alongside the Danish national team. Mm. A little protest there. Yeah, well, they'll still have a presence. Mm. Um, they'll still be visible. Yeah, on the field. But um, yeah. I guess they're they're um they're trying to make themselves. <laughs> it's interesting. I don't visible. know. I don't know. I don't know if that even hurts Qatar <laughs> and the organizers. Anyways, like it's not like Denmark. Say, so, oh, we're not go because yeah. that would be dumb. All right. Isn't everybody wants to play in the World Cup? But right. it's 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 something. Yeah. Less visibility as far as their their emblem and logo yeah. is concerned, um, as a mark of protest. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it's a start, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Maybe all nation, because I mean, I don't want to sound bad, Richie, but enough people, you no, know, enough of British nation, I probably said, but that might not gonna want mm. <laughs> You know, maybe everybody like you know Brazil, or, yeah, isn't maybe Qatar, um, And to the best of your knowledge, um, the the, the players. Um, all of this is not affecting the players. No, no, the right. players are ready to play. Yeah. As I said, they have some good baller. You don't know, Christian Eriksen was one of the players. So we'll be back. Remember, he had that mm-hmm. heart issue in the yeah. Euros where he collapsed. Well, he'll be at the World Cup. So mm-hmm. we're looking forward to see how Denmark, you know, bounce back. Good. All right. It's interesting stuff. Give thanks. Uh, the music world is saying goodbye to an iconic 90s star. Uh, his name is Coolio. Yeah, known for his 90s hit Gangsta's Paradise from the movie Dangerous Minds. Well, he died yesterday, unfortunately, in Los Angeles. He was only 59 years of age. Coolio's manager, Jerez Posey, confirmed his death, uh, stating that as far as what I know now uh, is that he was at a friend's house and was in his bathroom. Uh... Uh, They say Cooley died of a suspected heart attack, but no official cause of death has been confirmed. Um, When Cooley didn't respond to his name being called, his friend went inside the bathroom and found him unresponsive on the floor. The friend reportedly called paramedics. And uh, the story continues that uh, uh, investigations are being carried out. His real name was artist Leon Ivy Jr., and he was born in Moonsen, Pennsylvania, and later moved to Compton, California, where he would begin to set the roots for his music career. And uh, he had a few other songs that followed the big monster hit, A Gangster's Paradise, but none of them actually came close to the success he had with that. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, sharing stage with him once in California on a show I was hosting, which also had Beanie Man on it. And uh, that was at the heights of uh, Gangster's Paradise. And trust me, it was awesome what he did on stage. Really, really sad to hear this. Um, At such a young age, Coolio has passed. And uh, I guess we'll hear more as investigations are continuing. But uh, you heard in the story he was found uh, dead in a bathroom at a friend's house. May his soul rest in peace. And that was, of course, Update. Update.
All right, now, the proverb of the day. What yeah. do you have for us? I understand it's a Trinidadian uh, proverb. So, in other words, it doesn't make no sense to me, no. But what I want to know. Um, go Paul Luck is yeah. not see Paul Luck. Mm. What? You know Go Paul? No, no. Oh. I have to say it in a Trini accent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to yes. disrespect nobody. I don't know what to do that. You, you know see Paul? Not. Okay, just check. Not no, no Paul, I know see. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it in the Trini accent, boy. I have to say it in the Trini accent, boy. 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 Hey, boy. Oh, you got boy? Hey, boy. <laughs> no, 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 boy. <laughs> Go Paul look is not see Paul look. Okay. Well, if you're wondering what that means, let's tell you. Com- yeah. Comparison is useless because everyone is not meant to live the same life. Hence, mm-hmm. Go Paul look is not see Paul look. So, oh, so puss and dog not the same look. Ah, kind of, kind of, okay. kind of thing, kind of thing. Ah, right. Zane. Let me, let me add a little bit more meat to the bone. Yeah. Even if we want the same things, they won't happen for everyone the exact same way at the exact same time. So, our suggestion is embrace your journey, failures and all. You are unique and so is your experience. Additionally, don't be jealous of other people because you want what they have. Mm. Focus on your own goals. Keep doing you. And trust that whatever happens will happen for a reason. Oh, my. All right. Powerful. Yeah, All right. indeed. So that is go Paul Luck. <laughs> it's not see Paul Luck. That's in the proverb. You got a lot of information yeah, on that one, too. Big up to Trini then. Yeah. And now it's time for the pet, pet peeve, peeve of the morning. Who's got it? Let's find out. Come on to the Up and Go team and the World Bridge Nation. This man in my pet peeve, I'm sure so the whole I want can relate to it. Why every time after a heavy rainfall for a couple of days, well, after that, NWC just listen to just take the water. Them take the water. You know, people have to go to school, people have to go to work, just about them daily business. It's like them don't really care and there's not even no, a notice, say, oh, we are going to take the water, then just take the water. And what people build. We can't understand this. I know people got live this morning and couldn't be it in a king's life. Like seriously, the better. Here, 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 here. I know that. Give Marona a plus, man. Whoever it is, listener, we thank you here, sir. I know that, Tatrucci. What up? Because the listener say after rainfalls, eh? Mm. I know they say pet peeve heat reach me. I went the first drop of rainfall and then water just, you just see the pressure just start to go away. Jump. And then when the rain starts, the water gone. When I say, but bro. What it's are, crazy. Yeah, want me to send me out that door? <laughs> yeah, what I do? Yeah. NWC, get your act together, please. Mm. We beg of you. Yeah. And the, the the other part to the equation is that matter of 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 um doing several repairs on one <laughs> one piece of pipe, four or five different times. It's uh, bursting and and being repaired and burst and repaired. No. Mm. So thank you, caller. It's like um, I don't know if you listened earlier. Let me know that listener, eh? I don't know if they were listening earlier when oh. we made the, the same point. Yeah. Then better it's, a, be. it's a pet peeve of all of us, I'm sure. We yeah, can all relate. Be. So we thank the, the, the Bridge Nation listener yeah. there. All right. Good morning to Arif Butler. Morning, Arif. Good morning, good morning, good yeah. morning, Bridge <laughs> listeners. I'm in the building. Oh, whoa. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Making his presence felt. Um, some people look like them, li- them, 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 them like off your, your t-shirt and here some people are say, yo, what well, we can get that? Yeah, <laughs> I'll, thing, man. I'll tell you what, I'll have one specially delivered. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, Arif has, uh, has been doing a lot of stuff in his uh, life and has had a lot of successes. He started out really uh, in the music industry. Uh, I was reading a while ago that he was a member of a, a school uh, group called Crush back in the day in, in Mandeville where he was based. And then he took a trek into Kingston, uh, always trying to tap into the creative side of his existence. He got involved working at a photo studio, and then things started happening uh, bit by bit, one after the other. And now we can, uh, cl- uh, he can lay claims to being one of Jamaica's finest cinematographers and producers wow. and an all-around creative. Who is here to tell us about his journey this morning. 
Arif, um, we could say a lot. <laughs> I mean, I was reading some stuff a while ago. The names that you have worked with, the Beanie Mans, Oscar B, Ryan Mark, DJ Nicholas. You produced Drinking From My Saucer for Jay Bez. Yes. Your work has taken you to New York and Miami, Costa Rica, New Jersey, wow. Washington, D.C., <laughs> yeah. um, where you also filmed at the White House. Even there, yeah. Bro, what's yeah. next for you? <laughs> <laughs> but before we get to what's next, congratulations, man, and oh, welcome nice. once Thank again. You. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Just hearing you guys even said read, reading that. Yeah. Um, it's amazing, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. It's a good feeling. All right. Um, let me ask, start by asking you, though, what inspired your love and passion for cinematography? Well, the story begins with um, when I used to go to school. My mom used to own a video rental club called uh, Mid Island back then. It's, it's no longer in existence. But mm -hmm. um, I used to have the privilege of watching a lot of movies after school whether I liked it, yes or no. It was <laughs> kill time. And, you know, I, I saw the movies and said, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I want to do. And, uh, but at the time, there was not a lot of, or even none, <laughs> at that time, movies being produced in Jamaica from mm -hmm. our vantage point, so to speak. And one came out called um, The Harder They Come. I think it was Perry, Perry Hensel. Yep. That was it. That was it when, it when it really lodged in my head and said, yeah, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, I, I, and besides, I always wanted to tell stories from our vantage point, not necessarily a European stand, um, standpoint. Mm -hmm from a Jamaican Caribbean standpoint and yeah. that is what fuels me and that is how I started. Mm -hmm. Now my question is Arif, uh, you, you've directed, edited, produced major works, you know Richie mentioned a few but what I'm realizing is that we're seeing a nice fusion of secular and gospel. That's right. Now as a creative what was that like? How did you balance that? Was it difficult? Well no, it wasn't difficult because I'm I'm an overall madman. You know, <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I are very crazy people. I will, we want to see. We believe in excellence, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And um, in 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 any demographic or in any way you take it, whether it's in the gospel industry or in the secular industry, we believe that anything you're doing is supposed to be excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, that's exactly why when we were doing even um, recording in the studio, we were the first persons who actually printed every CD before they left the studio. There was no writing. On a CD to give her this jacket. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's standard. The, the mixing, everything was on par at the time. So people actually thought it was an overseas label. <laughs> really. yeah. So um, that 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 is how we really value um, excellence. Um, and I think if you really want your music or your content to be palatable on a grand scale, it really has to be excellent. Mm. Yeah. So sense. I think it was an it was a no brainer, natural thing to you know. To, to push for that for, for, for that that's right that's yeah. right respect no no personally I, I've dabbled in film myself mm. right I know a little thing here and there that's on the great. production side yes um, a lot of persons believe the creative process is just like a yeah shoot drop in edit we're good to go <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, no. thank you I'm glad I'm glad to hear you say that no oh, just, no it's, this is such I, I said the question here but I know it's a very vague question but mm. if you can quickly just highlight for the listeners what is that creative process like for creating a music video and you, or even a commercial. All right, let's say um, a music video. Let's say we, we just shot Marion Hall's um, new music video. Sorry yeah. to hurt your feelings. It's actually mm. doing very well. Yeah. But start, you have to hear the song and then connect with the song, one. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to connect with the song. In an, in, and if you, especially if you want to do it excellent, you have to then listen to the song, feel it, not just for what the artist is saying. Sometimes it's, it's what the rhythm is saying as well. Mm -hmm. It's weird. I mean, some people won't understand it yet, but mm -hmm. it's what the rhythm is saying, and sometimes what the artist is saying. Um, then after that, you would you would come up with a treatment, a script, so to speak. I would call it a treatment, treatment. and um, mm -hmm. then you present it to the artist. Sometimes the artist would say yeah. Sometimes the artist say add that. Sometimes they say no. You have to go back to the drawing board. That after that, no, we we sort out the locations, the talent, the the, the crew. Etc. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a dedicated crew, but we'd sort the crew out, etc. Mm -hmm. on that yeah. day. Then after we'd sort the process out, the date for shooting, reserve locations, mm -hmm. etc. It's a long process. Mm -hmm. After that filming day, we would make up has to be done. The the, the 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 set design has to be done. The hair, all of that. There's a whole lot of people come together to get that that thing rolling on that day to be mm -hmm. honest with you it's, it's really a, it's like a machinery well oil machinery and, and 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 especially time you you become a big respecter of time when mm -hmm. you're a director mm -hmm. right and um after we have shot some people say it's just a four minute song mm -hmm. how we take a three day to shoot <laughs> talk, talk to them oh boy yes shooting can take a long time retakes re a lot of retakes sometimes mm -hmm. 
makeup, especially for female talents. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Makeup has to be redone, retouched, etc. After that, we go into the editing stage mm -hmm. where we have to edit and editing now. <laughs> because it's a creative process, you may not necessarily want to approach editing like it is a job that you have to turn up to. Right? You want to feel the vibe there. Thank so you. some editors are morning editors like myself. If it past mm -hmm. 10 o'clock and I'm not started, I've not started done. working, they're done. They're done. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Why some people are night editors. Yeah, they yeah. will stay up all night. No, that's not me. Okay. Right? Mm. So at 5, 5.30, I'm out of bed, to be honest. Like clockwork, I'm editing at 5 a.m. in the morning. Mm. That's that's when I'm drinking coffee and that's my that's my spiritual time. Okay. So um, after the editing process, uh, then we present it to the artists. At the office, the artist would say, yeah, I love it. Or I love it, but change that. Mm -hmm. Work that. Work that in. Put that mm -hmm. in. And then after that, um, that's roughly the, yeah. the process. Yeah, roughly yeah. the process. Mm -hmm. What is interesting, though, I'm looking at the list. I mean, you, you work with like an Alkaline. Mm -hmm. You work with a Kevin Downswell. That's right. Mm -hmm. You work with a DJ Nicholas. You work with a Beanie Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, how do you, how do you go about um, selecting? Um, you know what you bring. Um, is it is it you're working with a song and what the song is saying? Because you're talking. I mean, I know that I've seen Alkaline's videos with some props, which um, you know would would take out people if they <laughs> if you get my drift. I get it. Yeah. I, 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 and a lady saw is going to come with something maybe with the Bible or something, yeah, right? Bible, yeah. So how do you go through that process? Um well, for me, I, I have to separate my personal belief to a certain extent and my personal it, as long as it's not I'm weighing on my conscience too much mm. and I have to try to create it to 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 present it in a palatable way. So what I'll do is find ingenious ways of how to how can I have this visually shown but at the same time without it being too um, graphic, graphic, right? Vice versa, without with the standard gospel music video, so to speak. I mean, people used to walk on the beach back then and sing mm -hmm. on sing on the rocks, looking out in the sea. Bluesy decided that we're gonna change that look, mm -hmm. right? And now, like a shutterman, shutterman. Remember when shutterman dropped for DJ Nicholas? It literally woke up the entire nation because we actually showed a murderer. Terrorizing a community. No, this is what happens to you when you die. But the regular gospel music videos wouldn't show that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to show you getting saved. We're going to show what is the reality. So for me, I like to show what it is in its truest form, right? And present that in a palatable way, mm -hmm. right? Talk to us a little bit about the work you're doing with uh, some students who understand from St. Croix, teaching them uh, the fine art of filmmaking. How is that coming along? Oh, man. Listen, uh, that, that, that is probably one of the most rewarding things that I've done in my life so far, mm -hmm. to be honest. I, I, I had to cancel the trip before, but I mean, because I have workload and I decided that, look, I'm going to have to go and get it done. But however, when I went there to St. Croix, the kids were so um, welcoming. The mm -hmm. teachers were absolutely fabulous. And they grasp what I was saying so fast. You would not believe. Mm -hmm. I, I gave them, like, we split them up in groups. Mm -hmm. We taught them what what the groups, like, let's say, the director's group. We have the gaffer group. Mm -hmm. We have the, the producers, the writers. So it's three, three students, right? And I know it was going to be technical for them. This is me with myself. No, it's mm -hmm. going to be very technical. Yeah. So I said to them, okay, the writers, we're going to need to to meet. I gave them give them a task so in the morning we're gonna have to shoot a film so the first day we actually started to to to, to go back but the, the first day we actually give them a, a crash course in the use of the equipment mm. and these kids were using like black magic ursas black mm. magic um mm -hmm. six k's they were putting on steady cams yeah not necessarily running that i wanted to bring them back to what yeah. real filmmaking mm -hmm. is so we had steady cams strap on lighting the whole works excitement Teachers excited, principals excited yeah. to see this has been done in the school. And um, the next day now, so I said, next tomorrow we're going to come and I'm going to meet with the writers group early in the morning because I knew that they, mm -hmm. they probably wouldn't have written what, yeah. I, what, what I asked them. That is mentally what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. you know. In the morning, kids come with them treatment and them treatment already dialogued out. Mm -hmm. Slap me like, yeah. yeah. They're ahead, so of, the like, they're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. No, to be honest, after working with these kids for, for, for five days, I think it had more of an impact on me than mm. <laughs> ju or just as amount as that it had on the kids. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I, I've never felt so rewarded doing anything, period. 
So wow. you, this is something that you'll continue doing. Oh yes, I'm going to actually mm -hmm. do it the same thing in Jamaica. We're actually planning it now to implement in the schools. Okay, here. okay, it's, fantastic. Uh, it's called the, it's called the, the, the economics of filmmaking because a lot of people say filmmaking. I say I don't know how people make money out of that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's one of the most lucrative <laughs> industries you could ever get into. Yeah. All right. Believe me. Yeah, <laughs> what projects are you working on currently that you can mention? Um, well, we're we're working. Well, I'm shooting Panic's music video this evening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Panic. Okay. Right, and um, um, this this weekend is pretty pretty. We're working on Hanky Panky and um, Bounty Killer. Mm. It's supposed to be this weekend uh, as well. This weekend more to new Sunday. song from Bounty. Yeah, that's okay. right. And mm -hmm. Hanky Panky, little right. Hanky Panky. Um, mm. we have just shot, as I said, sorry to hurt your feelings. Plus, plus Papa Son, mm. Papa Son just dropped two brand new music videos. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice projects. Okay. Plus, Great. we have a film in the making for next year. Wow. Ah, yeah, wow. so um, that's, what we, that's what we're putting in. <laughs> All right. right. A lot is going on, Arif. Congratulations, yeah, man. Right. Where can people find you on social media? All right. My social media, ha media handle is Instagram. It's um, at Bluezik. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the company. Spelled, spelled B L O O B L O O Z I C K. Yep. And uh, at I am Arif Butler. At A I A M A R I F F B U T L E R. All right. Yeah. Good to have you. Good to meet you. Oh, it's my and, pleasure. Uh, glad around. to hear about all these things you're doing and uh, positively impacting uh, cinematography mm -hmm. and the creative processes. Enough respects, bro. Enough respect. Big up. Yeah, man. Big up. Big up. Arif Butler, ladies and gentlemen. Robo ranks. Hey, yo, you know. <laughs> is, that, is that how they say it in London? Hey, yo, you know. Hello. No, it's actually, hey, yo, yellow. <laughs> yeah. What's good? What's good? Morning, team. If you were, morning, saying, team, if you were team. saying it in Cockney, what would it sound like? It'd be more like, ay, yo, yellow. Ay, yo, yellow. Anyway, it sounds, or it doesn't sound like Rodney Price. It just doesn't sound right at all. But I give it a try. But yeah, good morning and good afternoon, London, UK. We are connected right now. Yes, uh, sir. And, and you in mentioned. In the afternoon, but obviously early hours in Jamaica. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned Rodney Price a while ago, didn't you? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Rodney, Rodney Price, Rodney, Rodney. he's definitely in the news, bro. Hey, we should call it Revelation Rodney, man. I'm hey, telling you, you know, I'm one telling thing you. Up, one thing I, I do find about uh, the news that we, we are picking up um, or seeing um, on social media with a lot of acts and artists have a lot of things to say, they all seem to pile on Rodney at the same time. No, <laughs> one, no one dare to step out of line at the, by himself, it's like it's it's a collective gang of artists. <laughs> I just saw a, a post, obviously, from Mr. Lex, Lenny yeah. Lex, and, and, um, and Mr. Vegas. Lenny Lex has been, oh, they're, they're, <laughs> well, it, 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 it's 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 the trooper, the Mr. Vegas, obviously, the fans of Merciless, and yeah. it's just like the pylon is all at the same time. Even though we can, I'm sure we all can concur. Um, the passing of the legendary artist Merciless mm -hmm. should have been, in my opinion, observed much better. But he's given his reasons. And because he gave his reasons, that was it. Was, Let's get Rodney! <laughs> Let's all get hey, Rodney! Hey, Robo. It's, mm. Hey, Robo. Yes. Listening to the conversation, you know, it just reminded me of something Rodney would say, you know. Yo, they must team up on a scheme up. <laughs> <laughs> Why they must yeah. team up and scheme up? It, it, it's on, dream it's, up. it's <laughs> only when he when he did that interview that I realized that there was um, this this b banner which had his name or image as well as Ninja Man's and Beanie Man's alongside yeah, yeah. Merciless's, and uh, he 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 definitely um, finds that to be. Uh, maybe disrespectful and found it. Some, uh, some people would. Some people yeah, would. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you're if you're painted on a, on a mural, um, anywhere near a, yeah. a, a coffin or anything like that, a mm -hmm. burial ground. Right. You, some people will react different to that. I mean, mm -hmm. if I saw myself up there, I'd be like, wait. But yeah, what am, as I'm, I said, it was I'm a moment in time. It was a, his, it's a it was a historical moment in the history of Jamaican music. Sting, um, a clash institution. And it was a battleground that he lost alongside Beanie Man and Ninja. And they wanted to mark that as one of the, the special moments highlights, like a for, highlight Merciless. for Merciless. And people do things like that. You know, murals everywhere. We see murals in London everywhere that marks mm. so many illegal and illegal murals. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you're, you're depicted in a mural. It's just, it's yeah. just one of the, it's part the, of the course. Sir. It's the, history. The, so. the only thing I'm concerned yeah. about, though, is... Um, well, he has gone out publicly to state um, what he believes was the cause of death uh, from, mm -hmm. from Merciless. And, um, oh, he's a coroner now. 
Hey, yo, yo. Yeah. <laughs> and already, was, al- already, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing talk that um, it it could be um, a subject for um, for legal uh, a legal battle oh. because 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 it's, it's uh, okay. the, the official the official word is that um, it's inconclusive based on what um, the, the, the reports are so far. But uh, a, a Bounty obviously feels otherwise, and he went public with that. So um, mm-hmm. and in addition to all of that, um, uh, Robo, um, I'm hearing that before the end of this program, it is possible that a yeah. statement might reach my phone, uh, meaning a published statement um, mm. from maybe a PR agency that is handling um, a ninja man. And uh, yeah. uh, he might have given a statement, which it is likely that we will have before the end of this program. No, oh. because people have been saying, "Wow, Dina Man is very silent." Mm-hmm. Um, Ninja Man, we'd love to hear what Ninja is thinking. We have already heard what Bounty has to say, so yeah. it's an interesting development, and we'll be watching it very closely it going forward. Mm-hmm. It is, it is. But um, I mean, as I said, it's no smoke without fire, right? And and it 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 does make you raise an eyebrow. When, as I said, somebody um, like Merciless, I mean, anybody that's made a mark on Jamaican music in as an industry, because it is an industry. And Bounty said this in if you if you guys understood the industry, but the public are not here to understand the industry. Mm-hmm. The public are here just like everybody else. We're patrons. We're not here to try to break down and understand. And Bounty should know that. So yeah. the public will see somebody pass away uh, as important as Merciless. The public see things and if you if your if your name is your name has been connected to merciless for 20 odd years because of the clash at sting people will ask questions mm-hmm. so yeah um yeah as you said it'll be interesting to hear yeah, some of the comments is. what from, is it what is interesting is gaddafi former manager of merciless his response and uh he's very irate um, because I, I think he was referenced um, as, a, as a skirmish wow. <laughs> by, 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 yeah. by, by Bounty Killer yeah. in one of his uh, um, well, you know, statements. And, and, and he's not taking that lightly. Ricky Trooper is also there saying some stuff. Man, Ricky it doesn't Trooper. end. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it that doesn't was, that's why I said the pylon is, it, it's, is it's happening. Um, yeah, there's you definitely know, people a use pylon. social media as well. Mm-hmm. And, and even if you have a personal feeling um, that you, your, your personal thoughts are like, oh, the artist should have been there. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you need to take it to social media. I just think, uh, I, I think um, a lot of people have to have to get a grip, man. This is 2022, and everything good for sick, good for talk. <laughs> just, just have just to hold it down. Yes, I. Mm-hmm. That's All just right. my opinion. I just right. everything is for social media. But if you want to click on a like, do it, son. <laughs> hey, yo, yellow. 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 Oh, gosh. Yeah, so I didn't get to say, um, yeah, where you carry back from the party. I, I know this awards was awards was yeah. dishing out. Ooh. <laughs> you saw I, that? I, I see. I, I see. I, I see. I saw everything. Gosh. Yes. Mm, yes. Bro. Yes. Yeah, listen, I can't man. see none. I can't see none winging my way, but uh, okay. you, you, at the rate you're going, uh, bigger things are in the making, son. <laughs> it's okay. It's to, okay. Be, to be, to be, to be, on, to con- be fair. Congratulations on, congratulations well, on, well, on the party. Well, thank, thank you, uh, Robo. Sure. I came as a surprise, and um, but it was appreciated and um, and received humbly. That's and right. it goes to show that what we're doing when we're on air, we we, we sometimes even the little things. Um, do matter and yes. people are paying yes. attention uh-huh. and yes. Um, yes. eventually you will get re- your own recognition mm-hmm. so we give thanks get your reward you will yeah. get your reward yeah. no, most definitely so um, obviously stories that's in the news I'm sure shells must have been all, all over this one because uh, there was a nice fine young looking British lady who took to American mm. TV Fox <laughs> News. <laughs> was it la- was it last night? Am I let me, am I dreaming? Was two it nights ago. Night two nights ago, I think. Yeah. Two, two nights, nights ago. ago, yeah. Was it the same night when Jamaica got beaten by yeah. Argentina? Yeah, <laughs> three nil. <laughs> See, maybe so, sorry, it was the same night when Jamaica held Argentina to uh, only scoring one goal in the first half yeah, that before match, Messi came on. That match ended 1 0 for all I know. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, they used the cheat guys, code. Guys, they used the cheat uh, code, yes. Robo. Guys, guys, I'm not clutching. Okay, okay. <laughs> they were beaten. Yeah. If Messi started, the game would have been. Remember, 1942, Argentina's biggest score was 12 0. Mm. I'm not pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. But Messi Robo, had started. Hey, Robo. Bro, it was it was it was terrible, man. It was terrible. It was a nice defensive display, but yeah, 
awful up front. Mm. Awful. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. They needed, needed some energy up front. But um, overall, um, the, the coach was concerned that uh, Argentina would have shown up the weaknesses in the squad. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. but what I took away from that were some of the strengths that the, the, the Jamaican squad has and that they can build on going forward. What I, I always felt like the last game before a World Cup, mm-hmm. there's also the, 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 the coach, if there's nothing to gain out of it, the coach would just want to see the, the last formation. It's probably going to be his last team. But what you n- usually find just before a World Cup is players, fringe players, want to make their name. So they, mm-hmm. they go even harder. So it's the fringe players that sometimes usually see these, these crazy scores two or three games before the final mm-hmm. uh you know the final team and i thought that the fringe players from argentina like a one McAllister. it sounds like he's scottish mm-hmm, but he's yeah. actually argentinian yeah. he played in messi's role and he he was he was doing bits mm-hmm. so i i always knew that uh there's going to be fringe players that's going to make an effect but obviously messi on the bench means that the coach didn't really have much to gain out of this game but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it could have been a a bigger score, so well done, Jamaica, for that. <laughs> but what I was saying, it could have been a what I was, what, 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 it could, no, it could have been definitely. What I was saying, yes. Um, so th- this interview that went out, yep, um, on Fox News, mm-hmm. um, we've seen the interview, and a lot of people are kind of like uh, a lot of ladies out there is like all gushy and gushy, like oh my guys, I love you so. <laughs> so this Sadim Oz Turk, who is I, I, I was speaking about her a couple of days ago, um, to our colleague dub master chris in new york saying um she's not um you see her in the interview he was looking forward to the interview and i said what you see in the interview she's no shrinking violet so this mm-hmm. uh british turkish woman that vibes cartel is now entangled untangled and tingle tingle with with um she's been approached um from and you know richie when we say good source we have good sources, mm-hmm. no? okay. so good sources have have heard of of Many ladies who have approached her uh-huh. via social media. Mm. In other words, Oman stepped to her. Really? And she's given it. She like you go boat barrels on her, she go boat barrels back. Mm. She's no shrinking violet. So I I obviously watched the uh, the interview the other night, and I thought, okay, I can see why people think she's such a nice, placid, and soft yeah. woman and and soft. But no, she's not soft at all. Serious girl. So that was kind of confirmed by yeah. uh, one of our. Confirmers, Richie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she said, uh, 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 uh. she's had problems with her, or had issues with her, or conversations with her, and um, yeah, she's no shrinking violence. Okay. So for somebody to move into, uh, let's quote unquote, the first position mm. in Vibes Cartel's life, she could yeah. not, and I yeah, doubt so. very much that she's an easygoing yeah, she can, so. British. Well, as we sp- as we speak, woman. as we speak, yes. a member of the Bridge Nation is sending me a message. And it says, Ooh. imagine this. Cartel made a woman move from London to live in Jamaica all while he's in a jail cell. That's the Gaza thing, man. Uh, bro, he <laughs> says, I can't even get this girl to stop by me. <laughs> you know, I'm in the free world. <laughs> and then somebody, somebody comments and says, uh, you know, even in prison, he's unstoppable. <laughs> Word boss. Word well, boss. Well, listen, the way the pound is shrinking by the minute, I, I, I know plenty of people that would move from London and head to Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, so much yeah. But <laughs> that, 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 doesn't that tell you that this girl is no shrinking violet? To just itch and mm. jump a plane and mm-hmm. settle in Jamaica by herself, that Look, tells you a lot. Yeah, it does. She's not. Easy. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, and she, I'm not trying to paint any picture. She has some pictures wear about her, but she, yeah, she has yeah. a lot more than what meets the meets eyes. The so, eyes, yeah. yeah so uh, somebody's sending him, send me certain. another message. Let me just put them into the conversation here. It says, uh, "Did you see Shorty's response?" I said, "Yes, I, I saw it." And they said, uh, "What I saw was Shorty saying." Um, I remove uh, words like to the effect that she removes uh, the emotional side of her existence once she has her hands on the money. Oui. So I'm um, sure he has made a statement apparently by putting a post out, and um, it's going to be interesting days ahead. I think. Very much so interesting. Days. Um, so yeah, I. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to go there. I'm trying to be serious, guys. I was just, I was just trying to, you know, to, to all these these gushy gushy ladies out yeah. there who gushing and say, oh my god. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just saying. She's she's um she's done her bit. To move into that position and she's Thanks. not a shrinking violet and vibes cartel would say to her 
it was recently announced that Verticast Media Group had acquired CVM TV. CVM was previously owned by Michael Leachin's AIC Barbados, and that's Barbados Limited. And this morning, we're joined by the president and CEO of Verticast, oh. Mr. Oliver McIntosh, who is our guest on the telephone. Good morning, Mr. McIntosh. How are you today? First of all, Mr. McIntosh is my father. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver. I, I would never disrespect him by trying to use his title. Ah. So please, uh, please, Richard, Ali, as you know me, Ali. <laughs> All right, Ali. No formalities around here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> yes, uh, good to have you. First of all, congratulations, my yeah, brother. Man. Well, well, thank you. No, thank you. It's um, as you know, the, the hard work starts now because there are a lot of expectations. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, but we're looking forward to it though. We have a great team working on it, so we're looking forward to it. Was this was this an acquisition that you were eyeing for uh, a long time? And uh, what made you finally decide to go ahead with this acquisition? Well, it, it, it wasn't necessarily one that we're eyeing for a long time. It was just part of um, what we... Hello? Yes, I'm yeah, hearing you. We're hearing you. Okay. Um, it was part of what we envisioned as the makeup of Verticast. Mm -hmm. which is that we wanted to have a wide reach with cable channels across the Caribbean, but also to have channels that are intra-island, i.e. have a wide reach within each country. Mm -hmm. um, because as you know, cable has a good penetration, but it doesn't give you the widest audience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, so we, were, we have been looking at you know, different opportunities and we worked with, I've worked with CVM in the past on many different things. And, and just in discussions with CVM, it, it came about that there was an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we saw it as a great fit within Verticus. And, you know, we, we kind of put one on one together and made three. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, I think you have stated publicly uh, before that um, the core offerings of the station will remain unchanged. Is, is, is that factual information? Absolutely. Richie, we, we, we are not going to change it to CVM Sports. And the first <laughs> thing people ask me, how much sports are you going to put on? I say, look, it, it, is, it is going to remain a general entertainment variety channel with fantastic news, fantastic morning show, fantastic um, midday news. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to enhance it. So we're mm -hmm. going to put on new programming. We're going to look to do our own productions, but also look to partner with local artisans, local producers. Um, and then obviously we're going to take some of the sports that we have within our Verticast inventory mm -hmm. and put on, on C Sport. Hey. We haven't quite decided what that is yet or when that will be. But the assessment and evaluation is going on now. We, we expect by, I would say, within the next you know, 14 to 21 days that we will make a decision as to what content will be on, on, on CVM that we have within the broadcast inventory. Mm -hmm. hey. Hey, greetings, greetings, all the shells here. You know, so, so listen. Yeah, man, shells, um, but damn, I'm, no, I'm a sports lover. I mean, you talk about it a little. My, my virgin name would have vexed if I'm going to ask this. You understand me? You mentioned... <laughs> The sport, you know, I'm going with this, you know. <laughs> you mentioned what Verticus has under their umbrella in terms of sports. Premier, yeah. and we know you guys have the broadcasting, right? So, for World Cup 2022, the English Premier League, and NFL across the Caribbean. Now, yeah. I mean, yeah, you mentioned some days and dates where we can expect something. Are those going to be in there somewhere, sir? Somewhere in there, somewhere? <laughs> we don't know. Well, first of all, Chef, let me ask I, I know you're a, I know you're a sports fan. Mm-hmm. But if you're a true football fan, I need to know which team you support first. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs> ah. Chelsea. <coughs> no, I said football, isn't it? Not Chelsea. Chelsea. Richard. You, yes. know, you, see, you see this now. You see this now. <laughs> if, uh, I, I'm prepared so like to assume United. that if you're, if you're not supporting Man U, um, it's so like you, a United you, you, fan. you might have a problem so continuing like a this, in this conversation. It's so like a United Chelsea. fan. So like it's like it so like nobody on this program <laughs> understands sports or football. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the issue. It's Hold not on. funny right now. Don't when tell me. support top of the table teams. Don't tell me. When don't Ali. support top of the table teams. <laughs> Hold on. Like? A city, a city, a city. Like, like Arsenal. Oh! <laughs> 
Yo, I completely <laughs> forgot that they're on the top of the table. One of you used to it in the alley. One of you used to it. Have a seat with me. Our apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, so, so let me tell you, Charles. Yeah. Um, um, look, we, we haven't made that decision yet, right? Mm-hmm. That being said, though, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a bad assumption to tie together the fact that we now own CVM. We own the rights for the World Cup and the Premier League. Obviously, there's going to be a synergy there, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, but but the level as to, as to how much of that content goes on CVM, um, we we haven't decided yet. Okay. But but for sure, to your brethren, them, <laughs> um, you can tell them that we are going to have a fantastic amount of quality sports on CVM. Okay. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, so this acquisition now allows you to uh, further develop your strategic vision to create basically a regional media entity. Um, right. how, how far a reach will it have, and why is this an important aspect of, 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 of your growth? So, you know, one, one of the things that um, we have committed to some of the rights owners that we have acquired rights from and also to our investors is that we're going to try and have as deep a reach as possible Mm -hmm. and while we've gotten off to a great start with our c sport app and we have you know you know a a number of thousand of subscribers throughout the region um and we have partnerships with over 20 cable operators in the region including jamaica yes so we, you know, our, our C Sport channel is broadcast on on Home Time, Mars Cable, Cornwall Cable, um, about six or seven cable operators in Jamaica itself. It doesn't get us the free tier television; still has the widest reach, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And and our commitment to our partners is that we will endeavour to get the widest reach and get by having or content broadcast on different platforms. And one of those is free tier. Okay. Um, so that, that's where we think the value of this acquisition and broadcast of content um, puts us. It gives us access to a wider advertising market from a revenue standpoint, obviously. Um, but what it does for us is it, it, it allows us to use that platform to bring on new content, to bring on newly acquired content, newly produced content. So, um, so we're, we're really excited about it. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Ollie, we, we really thank you for coming on this morning yeah. and uh, sharing with us uh, details of this acquisition. I, I don't know if you're aware that uh, there, there's a whole lot of, I, I call it rumor mongering, because people are out there calling all kinds of numbers as to how much it would have cost you to make this <laughs> acquisition. Uh, I, I have not fallen for it. I've st- I've stayed away from it. But if you wish to state, you might want to do that. If not, it's it's still not a problem. If you want to talk about the value of of this acquisition or the cost of it, so to speak. Why well, there has been a lot of talk about it. <laughs> yes. Obviously, you know the the terms of the agreement are confidential. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll tell you this, yes. Richie and, and Chev. Mm-hmm. The moment we disclose it. I'll come here to disclose it first. All right. First. All right. All right. All right. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> we have you on record. <laughs> and we'll hold you to that. Congratulations yeah, again, yeah. Ollie. We're proud of you, man. And uh, may you continue to grow from strength to strength. We'll be watching as, as always. Thank you so much. Bless up. Yeah, man. I look forward to working with, with, with you guys as well. All, All right. right. Big respect. There's a lot of things we can develop together, you know. I know. Let's Say it. less. Bobby Clark is listening, sir. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. Now, Bobby, reach out to me already. So. Oh, See, okay. Eh? There oh, you go. That's there you go. Bobby, my brother from a long time. There so. you go. That is it. Um, yeah, man. Possibilities are endless. Trust me. Respect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. You too. All right. All right. That was uh, Oliver <laughs> McIntosh, <laughs> Verticast president and CEO, Whoa. Recent, who recently acquired CVM TV. Exciting Whoa. times are ahead. Yeah, man. And um, need I say more? Say less, I don't man. think, I don't good, think man. you need We're to. Good. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> And we're going off into our next feature, which is Man Chat. Man Chat. And uh, we have been telling you uh, that we have an interesting topic to look at this morning. 
the question is, is a man obligated to take care of his partner's children that she had before they got together? Mm. It's an interesting, um, interesting uh, topic. Uh, mm-hmm. Dating someone with kids is, uh, somebody wrote, uh, it's a commitment with a capital C. Mm-hmm. When you okay. enter into a relationship with somebody who has some would say the baggage of children who aren't yours in addition to an to an ex relationship with some sort of conflict um, it has been written you're already going to have some potential challenges okay yes. right how do you overcome those well to help us through this uh, discussion we have Treg Taylor also known as Sir T He's our guest this morning, and he's a gospel recording artist. He's a musician, a producer, and a teacher of music. And he's on the phone with us this morning. Good morning to you, Trig. How are you? Sir T. Yes. Good morning. Morning, sir. Welcome to Top of the Bridge Up and Go. All is well? How are you doing this morning? Yes, I'm doing good. I'm doing good this morning. Glad you could join us for this, um, this, this interesting, I'm sure, discussion that we'll have. Is a man obligated to take care of his partner's children, uh, those that she would have had before he got involved with the lady? Yes, your views? Yes. Well, my views is that when you marry the lady, you marry her baggage. <laughs> 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 when you get married to her, you get married to all her trouble, you get married to all her, for better or for worse, for rich or for poor. <laughs> so, so I believe that marriage is a thing that whatever whatever situation or whatever status that she's in, that's what you sign up for. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 if, if, if the father is active in, in, the, in the children's life that she has, let them do them part. But at, this, at the end of the day, you living along with that lady and living along with them, you still will have to play that father role and you still will mm-hmm. have to take up. So if the father is not present, then you know it's your responsibility and all those things you should have looked on in the dating process before even getting married. Mm-hmm. Will you be able to? Just like if a man have um, an outside child and she married to him and he's taken, that child will have to be her responsibility mm-hmm. in growing. So same way the, the, the wheel would turn. Now, Serti, watch, watch the style now. Now, you mentioned marriage, and I'm with you. I'm with you with that, you know. When you, when you, when you, marry, when you take on someone in marriage, you're married better or for worse, all of that. We know, we know the vibes. But you yeah. mentioned the dating scene. So are you saying that for, for, for us men, if we, if we take on a woman that has children, we have the choice then to say, you know, say, oh, can't work out. And should, should we feel bad if we say, oh, you know, sorry, sorry, princess, you know, it can't work because, you know, we can't handle that. Is, is the, 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 does that make us the bad guy? No, no, no. Look here, we we must know what we can manage and what responsibility we want to take on in our life. So most men, they have a, a pattern or they have an idea of what they they want their life to be. A lot of persons don't like the soap opera. Mm-hmm. Because when you do take on that, then you have an outside man coming in and oh, telling this and telling that. And then you have even the children at times they pick up on the tantrum look here you're not my father you can't talk to me and all them something there so when you do sign up with it it's not going, it's not going to be an easy road mm. you're going to have a lot of different you know not, not even you're trying to know that even the lead that you're married to when you talk to the child a certain way and reprimand the child and say do not talk to the, my child like that yeah. so all of those roller coaster you have to deal with so if I as a man and I look into it and I realized that, look here, <laughs> me can't manage a soap opera in my life. Mm-hmm. I want a steady life and a life where my responsibility is my responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's my decision. Then I'll let the person know, no, man, I'm not going to sign up for this. Mm-hmm. But if I love the person so much that I can look past that and I get to love the children also, no problem, I'll work along with it. But I must know where my pocket can stretch. <laughs> And I must know where that I can manage because having your own child or your children, the other children will also deprive your child of that bright future that you want to give to your child. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're a type of person that is managing yourself as okay, I don't want any more than two children. Mm-hmm. And then when you marry the lady, you get a packet of seven children. Mm-hmm. So your children deprive of the future that they're supposed to get and everything. So, so, so is the idea to try to uh, contribute or to take over fully the responsibility 
And um, what about uh, the, 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 the original, the father of those children? Mm. Um, sh should, should he be ostracized? Mm. Well, well, in Jamaica, we know that we have sperm donors. Yeah. Sperm donors that we have fathers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 60% um, of Jamaicans that um, men who have children don't take care of their children. Mm -hmm. A matter of fact, if they even know that they have them. So, it depends on the status uh, um, of that relationship with the father and the child and, 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 and the wife. So, if the father is present in the child life, child's life, then, you know, contributing and everything would be good and everything else. So, but if it's a case where the, the father is not present and is not doing his duty, yeah. then it's not a choice. It's where you just have to step up to the, the plate and, and take over and, and, play, and play that father role. I agree. Uh, have, so you see, have you seen where there are, there are, there are conflicts uh, with, with the approach of the, of the, shall we say, adopted father and the, the, the actual mm. father of the children? Or it can be, yeah, man, it can be conflict. If, if, they, if the father is present in the child's life, mm -hmm. um, then there can be conflict. Because uh, when you come on to reprimand, in our, even that whole jealousy of the, the father trying to take over the role of yeah, the original father, mm -hmm. a lot of jealousy and a lot of things can, can show up there. But if, it's, if the father is not present in the child's life and not doing anything in the child's life and not even being in the child's life, then I don't see any conflict right there. Because he gave up his role, but mm. if the father is pretty much there, there can be a lot of conflict. Mm. Now, Certy, how 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 can alright? So we know it going on in the culture. You know, there there's a man out there right now just take up on him and impress. One, yeah. she has her kids. It's a beautiful vibe. And we mentioned, you know, that that we mentioned it a while ago. The ego thing with us men, yeah. you know, the thing go. How can I'm, How would that man even begin that conversation with the the the, the, the actual father? Like, listen. Whether the, whether or not the father is in the child's life or not, you know, listen. Is is should should I or let me just put myself in the situation? Should I, as as a man looking to take care of these kids, should I do, do I even need to engage this father, the original father? <laughs> Good question. Mm. And, 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 and it, as we say, it will go back again and 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 based on the status. If the father is active in the child's life, then I would leave it up to the mom. Uh -huh. To communicate, because I, I, I never got to talk to no man in the first place. <laughs> so I don't know why me and a man need to be a doc and I, <laughs> yeah. I know certain things. So I would give that responsibility up to the mother, yeah. which is to talk to her ex or whosoever I be. Mm -hmm. And so look here, this is the status now. This is such and such. This is who I am getting married to. And I don't even know how to talk with no man. <laughs> so, he, so it's on her part, you understand? Yeah. So she needs to deal with all of that. If, they, if there comes in, in any big conflict now where I realize that my wife can't manage, ah. that's when I step in. Mm -hmm. But that is up to them to, to start out and to deal with holding down work and everything and everything. And then she can relate back and tell me exactly what is what. But when, when it comes down to drastic things now, that's when I step in when I realize that and disadvantages they've been taking and whatever and, and the approach and the, the, the disrespect and everything that's when I step in as a man now mm -hmm. but I leave them to sort that out mm -hmm. they them what they were doing when they went and got that child so they must know how to sit down and work it out okay mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> they should. Right. At least they should, right? <laughs> they, they, they should. Well, um, do you see? I mean, especially for the father who has children of his own, um, um, and now will take on these additional responsibilities. Mm. Do you see um, that as an, uh, uh, you know, uh, a risky investment mm. in 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 terms ah. of the investment you put into the child that is not yours? Mm. Yes, it's a, it's a, but, but, but would we really look at it as an investment? And this, this is one of the problems that we do have um, as Jamaicans and as, and as parents, you know. Yes, it's really an investment, but should we really look at it as an investment? Because if I have my child, which is my rightful children, I'm just doing my duty, which is to provide for them, mm -hmm. to send them to college, which is to make sure that they get the best education and everything. Really and truly, in my mind, well, maybe I'm, I am different. I am not looking at it as an investment because I am looking as a, as a father, which is mm -hmm. to have my pension and to have my thing put in place and to set myself. Yes. So when I reach a certain age, I know that I am not, I am not um, deprived of things that I would want and everything. 
So if I think that way as an independent parent, I wouldn't really look at my children as an investment. As I say, most parents do so, mm-hmm. and I, I, I don't say that they're wrong. But home, I have two children. And I don't look at it as an investment. It's just the women need to do. Mm-hmm. And they need to get to that level. They need to be the best in what they're doing. Because I want to see that when they grow, they, their families, they, they're wealthy and they have them family and everything is set. Yeah. But if they if they decide to come around and to give back and to, it's up to them, mm-hmm. you know. Of, but I, I, I want to look. And that is the thing with most relationships. A man and a woman go together and a man look at it as an investment. He's investing in the lady and and the lady says she's investing in the man and everything as such for the much years of investment. So when the relationship gone bad now, first thing suicide won't come to mind and man won't back this sound man. No, no, no. no. When, yeah. When I'm in a relationship, I'm in a relationship for the relationship. If the relationship ends tomorrow and we put this together and we put that together and everything as such for either we're gonna work it out, we're gonna split it off, or you take it and me start over. But I'm not looking at it so much years. I gave you this and I want this back and me, me put this in a day. No, 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 no. That's what I sign up for. So I don't look that. I'm saying maybe I am different. But I don't look those ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Honest comments coming from uh, the man we call Sir T. And a few a few of the questions uh, from us might be, uh, you know, we ourselves here playing devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Sir T. How is the recording career going? Anything new for us? Yes, I, I presently have an EP coming out, so we're presently working on it, which is to release it the end of next month. But we're going good so far. We have nice songs out there, and I'm thankful that all the radio stations and everybody keep on playing them and everything. All right, let us get our hands on a couple of those tracks. Thank you so very much, yes, Trig, man. and uh, have a good day today, man, and yes, bless up to yeah, your man, family. You, man. Thank you for having me, man. All right, our pleasure. Yeah, Trig Taylor, All ladies right. and gentlemen, we call him Sir T, uh, a gospel recording artist, musician, and producer, and he's also a teacher of music, giving his honest views this morning on the topic for Man Chat, which was really a question. <laughs> Should, is a man obligated to take care of his partner's children, those that she might have had, before they got together. And uh, you heard the deliberations on that subject.